Um, what, these or, or these? I mean, there is something to be said about just straight clear dice. You don't really see them because everybody wants to do something really unique. Um, us included. I've only done a couple of sets of really clear dice and usually just for my, uh, for my masters because it's easier to see the imperfections on them. Um, now, I like the red one, but I see the point of clear ones. Yeah, so the red one is kind of fun. This is, uh, there you go. You can see the, uh, the mylar and stuff in there, some little flashing and all that kind of stuff. This is actually an orphan dice because uh, part of the set has bubbles in it. Um, but, you know, the click clacks. So, there you go. Um, Oh, absolutely. Also no mechanical keyboard. Yeah, I've got a better keyboard on the other side. Um, this is the cheap keyboard that uh, I had for this bench. I don't do much typing on this side. I do all my study and work and stuff over there. And then I come over here and do my making. So like, we do have custom keyboards and stuff. We've done that. Um, Doing the resin keycaps though, that one to me is a, uh, I don't know, I might I might explore making some molds of them later. Uh, just be, just for from the point that they don't take much resin, so you can kind of do some weird stuff with them. But I find keycaps a bit of a pain <laughs> overall. And maybe resin keycaps wouldn't be the worst, but um, yeah, I know it would be something a little bit tricky. Um, I don't, yeah. So keycaps are a little bit annoying. And I know that you can charge ridiculous amounts of money for them if they're all nice and pretty. But uh, yeah, I, I if I was going to do that, what I'd end up doing is like a full set of engraved uh, keycaps. And then it becomes this really massive mold with a lot of pieces and a lot of silicone. And it would end up being really expensive. And nah, I'm good. I'm so good. I... I, I enjoy making stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like practicality, function over form every time. So, on the function portion, the idea of this set was that this would lock in here, and this set, this is an earlier iteration that has some fitment issues, but the idea was that would lock in there, and that would lock in there, and then you would screw these two halves together, and that would give me a silicone tight seal. And it almost worked. The problem was we ran into was right in these corners. Now I did grab some sealing cord to see if I could try and modify the bottom grooves to take it, but it just didn't work very well. And the big thing is, is that corners are really hard to seal just in general, right? So. I really like this idea. This is cool. Now, so that's problem one, is this doesn't fully seal. Uh, you know, you can get around that with some, some glues and sealants and stuff, but you know, problem one, the thing doesn't work the way it's supposed to. It doesn't do like one of the two things I need it to do, seal. Um, the other part I have it problematic is that all of these dice don't actually fit on the uh in the mold so if i line all these pieces up they can get very close but they can't actually touch and i run into issues where and here's our first one all right there we go if i just pull a sheet of paper in it'll adjust that down um you can see that this one's already you're going to look at the back of my head for a second. Oh, no, not the back of my head. There you go. Um, you can see that these two are already already crashed into each other. So that's no good. Um, 
So we need to be able to adjust this spacing. Now, the goal of this is, as a whole though, was that we have our new pressure pot, thanks to everybody supporting our Kofi, which was phenomenal. And I wanted to make this so that I could fit four of them in a, uh, in a layer. So theoretically, we'd be able to put eight in a pot. Um, this is a little smaller than we needed to go. I think I ended up making this able to fit four of these, which I don't need to. I only need to be able to fit one mold in there, one mold case at a time. So that's going to be one part. Uh, the other part that I want to change, uh, I don't hate this little wedge shape. I think it's actually kind of nifty. It's fun to hold. Um, and I think it should hold up reasonably well. Um, we'll have to kind of mess with it and see how things go, but, um, the problem I have here though, is that like, for instance, I have these chamfered edges. I can actually see this, but I can't like the walls come up and cover those up. So it's a little bit annoying to position dice on it. Uh, and we have obviously these seams. So what I want to do is this same kind of mold, except this we're going to expand out to a plate. We're going to put a little groove that I can drop this into. And then instead of this being two pieces that align vertically, we're going to put this seam on that plate. So basically, instead of screwing in through the sides, we'll screw in from the top like a flange into the base. And that'll compress our gasket and hold everything in. So that's the goal for today. Um, we had a very, 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 very long stream on Thursday, and we have a fairly long stream coming up tomorrow. So it's going to be a bit of a lower energy, uh, bit of a lower energy day, um, but that's okay. So to finish quickly discussing what we're looking at doing, so what we effectively want is a marker that works would be a great start. Nope. Okay. You're dead to me. All right, so we have a circle here. Uh, and then we'll have our actual dice space in the center where we'll have all our standoffs, whatever, right? And then around the perimeter, we'll have a series of heat inserts. And then on top of that, we'll have another piece that basically does uh, this. And then that'll be a, a radially symmet symmetrical item. And there'll be a, uh, a knock for the spot. And there'll be holes for M3 screws. So basically, this piece will go on the top and we'll end up with this situation where we have our bottom plate. We'll have our dice sitting on top of their pedestal. And then we'll have a... Um, gasket that sits there that comes down here and then a screw goes into here so this is kind of what we're looking at making um, well that's unfortunate timing <laughs> I assume that you just happen to line up with the timer command perfectly Well, I've only been going for 14 minutes as far as Nightbot's concerned. So yeah, this is what we're planning on designing. So I want to be able to actually put a gasket in there. I think that's going to remove a lot of issues. Because uh, like the whole idea is presently making a mold is kind of annoying. So I have, for the molds that you've seen, I have something similar to this, but then I put plexi panels and glue them in. Uh, and... The problem is with when the mold making is a pain, um, you're less likely to engage in it, right? And this is something that I need to do every 15 to 20.
side of this. However, I do want, as much as possible, my final mold plate to fit inside of one of these wedges. I want, so I don't care what the mold itself does. I care what the, um, so to be, to be clear, I, I care about this. I don't care about this. So long as this fits in the pot, I'm happy. As long as this fits in one quarter of the pot, I'm really happy. So that's going to be kind of the, the goal that we're trying to, trying to balance, right? Um, is we want to make sure that, because obviously there's going to be the offsets for all the walls and the flanges and for the different bits and bobs and everything. So we're going to, uh, we're going to mess with that a little bit, I think. Oh. And today I do have a hard stop, so we're not going to be uh, going anywhere near eight hours long today. Um, now, I still don't mind the little wedge shape. I'm just contemplating how beneficial that's going to be to me. Um, so, like, I suppose this is where you can kind of mess around with some different shapes, right? So, if we were to go with a round mold, like, there's only so much that you can do to actually fit four in there. And generally speaking, they're going to have to be inside of the one piece. Now, if we can only get three, I think that's also acceptable. But I think a circle is about the least efficient piece that we could have for this. Um, <laughs> thanks for dropping the stream anniversary. Um, yeah, I think the circle is the least efficient shape we can have in this instance. It's going to be easier to, sh to seal, but I think this is going to be really negative because uh, there's no way we can actually get all the pieces in here, and it's really difficult to, uh, to actually make that happen. So we're going to still start with our... Um, I'm going to actually just leave that as its own sketch. just as a shape sketch and now I can come in here and this will be basically kind of what I what I build everything off of so um, so if I take this whole space And we fill that in. That's fine. Um, now I do want to find the center of my object. And I'm not sure if that's going to be quite the center of my object or... Yeah, that's... I think that's about the best spot to put that circle. So now that becomes my new boundary, uh, my new boundary shape. So as long as I'm inside of this circle, I'm happy. Although that's actually a really bad spot to put that circle, isn't it? All right, we're gonna. That's the better spot. There we go. There we are. Okay. So we have our little wedge. That's going to be the overall overarching goal that we're kind of aiming for. And then we need a um, a piece that we can kind of surround that with to put a uh, put a seal on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these. We're gonna offset that, and we're going to offset it by. Oh, do I have a ruler in hand? No. Having a ruler always, uh, and I'm on the wrong screen. Come on, Cole. Get it together. Nuggie's gone. Should I make more? Uh, are you hungry? Do you want more? I want that to be 30. 
30 is not going to work. 30 is going to be way too big in a couple of different dimensions. Hungry? Eh. Want more? Yes. I mean, you know, it's it's about dinner time. <laughs> I can get away with 20 pretty easily. Oh, hey, Carrot. Alright, now I want this to be deep enough to be able to use it as a double-sided object. So we're going to make that a little thicker than I normally would. Yeah, dick. Oh, hi there. Oh, hello, cold 911. E. Yes. Oh, hi there. Yes. I just, uh, my computer was just at the... <laughs> look look like... what I did to OBS. Oh, I like that. That looks right? good. Right? Isn't that better? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Grace pinned this message and it went like that. And I lost all but one line of chat, and I was like, um, "Oh yeah, yeah." That needs to go away. So then I moved this down, and I can actually size it up properly, and it's fantastic, and I love it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, and the horizontal layout for those works much better in this configuration. Yeah, it does. I like that. I might need to get you to come in. I need to clean up my OBS. Yeah, um, yeah. I've been trying to do the same, but obviously time. Because I've got all kinds of like. I all kinds of layers right now that need yeah. to get like moved because of course like I had I had Streamfest and then I had 100 hours and yeah. I had all those other and things. And a thousand muted sources? Yeah, pretty much. So I need to like move them down or delete them or something and yeah. A all, rant about OBS. All words are good words, guys. That's my rant. <laughs> I do a rant. Um, but by the way, um, they haven't shown up yet today. However, I, I had a unusual thing happened uh username clockwork legacy uh followed and then immediately subscribed with prime while i was offline oh. yeah well it's because you're just that amazing I, I assume it's somebody i know or somebody of somebody i know in real life but yeah. i'm not sure we're gonna find out fair enough um i think i am going to um we're making our new dice mold uh design nice i think i'm gonna um cast and then i'll uh and then i'm gonna do final prep okay you okay with me casting mm -hmm. um just so i can kind of wrap my head around what's going uh what's gonna go on on this and <laughs> absolutely yeah and then i'll get ready for the yes Ooh. i i know this is not going to be a very long stream yeah i'm, I'm uh first shocked because i didn't know that you were streaming today i thought you were only streaming tomorrow yeah i i i, I don't know i contemplated doing uh doing both, but... Eh. Yeah, I get him. Alright. Love you. Love you. Did I read most... Did you ask Cole, did you? Am I having a stroke? I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Oh, no, I did not. I did not. I did not ask about... Carrot! Come back here. Yeah, I can't remember anything. Is that... I've been told I need to, uh... I've been told I need to give you a hard time. Because apparently you were, uh... Saying stuff about my birthday? Oh... Were you around for the, um... No. Okay. Um, Roe redeemed a uh, perfect date, but he redeemed your birthday. Okay. Um, and that was... It was Nietzsche, and some stuff went down with Nietzsche. Um, yeah. Uh, so Nietzsche went insane on your birthday. Oh. Yeah. And then his... I have that effect on people. And then his sister uh, co-opted all of his writings and made them pro-Nazi. 
And yes, all because he went insane on your birthday. Neat. Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything about it on, on stream of like, oh, this date is Mothman birthday. But like, yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah, it was a, oh. it was a long, long entry. It was entry. a long entry. It was a very long entry. In a fairly short book. Right? Like, it was a solid, like, two pages of, re of uh, reading. I actually ended up even skipping. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very long one. <laughs> and it was, like, salacious. There were some beautiful words in there, though, I'll say that. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyways. I'm gonna go dice and read. Okay. Uh, yes. Lovely. My computer is restarting because it was angry. Ugh. All right. Let's move back here. Um, because I want to make that, I want to make that my functional area. So what I might actually do is just push that up a tiny bit. trying to think how 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 best to do this Brain's not moving very fast today, so I apologize for that. Um, all right, we're gonna start by doing something that I'm probably gonna end up undoing later. Well, that's always a good place to start. Oh, I'm not apologizing for anything. I'm just saying my brain's not firing very fast today. That's all. <laughs> like you're you're here by choice. I'm just letting you know what's going on. Um, all right. So, step that up as a little piece. Then I can... I can cut a... Choice. <laughs> Questionable. Um... I want to do a sketch on this surface. So we're going to do a, a feature that we haven't actually uh, covered on here before. Um, is that the center of... Ew, that was not the center of that circle. Where is the center of that circle? Ah, the origin. Good. All right.
figure out what this distance is here. I'm going to convert that in. So generally speaking, if you want to have a more robust model, what you're going to want to do is derive geometry from other geometry, right? So in this case, rather than doing a measurement, because I could tell, I could measure what this wall distance is, and then I could just set this off as that distance off of one of the walls. And that's, uh, that's totally fine. That totally works. Uh, but at the same time, obviously I need to make sure that, uh, I need to make sure that this, uh, if I were to change where this groove is located, I don't want to have to go back through and break and remake my entire model. So I'm going to define a Oh, hold on. What's going on there? That. That. I should be able to just make coincidence without changing the length. There we go. Alright. There we go. So now what we have done... just want to hide that plane. That's annoying me. Alright. So what I, what I have got done now is... Uh, I've defined this gap, and then if I were to change this width, this distance here is automatically going to change. It's automatically going to move where this center point is. Because um, if I move that groove, I'm going to have to redefine my top top face anyways. So, you know, we need to make sure that that's all reasonable. Um, I'm going to have to clean up that whole intersection. That's fine. So, we want to make sure. Reasonable. The... The, the grape jerkyable. That, that, coincident. Need sockies. All right. You get the cozy socks. So we're going to start with our first hole here. And these are going to be 4.1 millimeter holes. And there's a very good reason for that. them in that direction. Nope. We're going to dimension them as an array in that direction. We're going to make sure that they are properly dimensioned so that they don't move around on us. Then we're going to do the same thing but in the other direction. So a 40 millimeter uh, no, 40 millimeters in the y-axis and we're going to need the same number there so this is entirely too many uh this is entirely too many uh fasteners but i'm kind of uh kind of here for it because having too many fasteners is going to give me the ability to really crank down and um hammer in on any areas that might be leaking, which is kind of a kind of a critical thing. So and we're gonna do the same thing we did before, but in this case it's going to be with respect to the um, diameter of our outer edges. That's where. Yeah, that's close enough.
There we go. That's all defined now. So again, we're going to put a circle at the intersection corner, 4.1 millimeters. And then we're going to use a radial sketch pattern, which that's my circle. And I want to make sure that I have uh, 45 degrees. 45? No, it's 90. 90 degrees. Might actually be marginally more than 90, but 90 is going to get us to where we want to be, I think. Um, 95? 92. 93. That looks right. Um, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Six. That honestly looks kind of reasonable to me. Um, I want to see what is my distance between those. Yeah, it's about 40. It's almost identical to the same that we had before. So I think that's uh, that makes me happy. And we're actually going to go uh, through all. Now, normally I wouldn't go through all on, on a sketch like this because uh, I'm trying to prevent leakage. However, in this instance, um, what I can do is a tiny, tiny extrusion in the middle plane if I really want to, but I don't think I need to because uh, ideally we're not going to see any silicone anywhere near these and we're going to be putting heat set threaded inserts into both sides, the top and bottom of this. Um, so that'll all be that'll all be happy days. Now, with all of that said, we now need to define our standoffs. So, this is where things are a little bit trickier. So we're going to actually come over to our other model and look at our fundamental geometry in which I've actually already built my base, my base dice. Although, do I want to use these ones? No, I'm going to use a different set. Um, I'm actually going to use a different set from my old dice mold, which is not present in this list. All right, let's go find it. Da da da. Dice, dice base. All right, so this is my original dice mold situation. And it did make life a little bit easier, but um, we're not gonna be, uh, we're not gonna be using this. This doesn't, this isn't shaped properly anymore based on our new, uh, on our new situation, so. Uh, we want to make sure that we find our dice themselves. Stretch. Thank you. Uh, oh. A situation, I say. Yes. Not, not, not full Brenda, but you know, some kind of situation at least. I did this again. Okay, well that, that file is now just dead to me. I'm gonna have to go fix that later. Um, all right, so I can paste the sketch from the other one that I had in here. And then this allows me to uh, start positioning dice. So these are the footprints that I used for kind of the base, the base geometry, which then we can squeeze in a little bit. This is the actual dice themselves. And then on this one here, so what you can see what we did, um, 
is we've got our base geometry and then that got extruded up and then it got chamfered to make the transition a little nicer that's for mold making reasons and then we did an offset on that uh, again and this has been actually a really fantastic option for us uh, which is to say two millimeters offset in from the edges of the current shape so we're gonna need to keep that in mind as we go but we do want to have these for our pedestals which is going to be good. So we can start moving some uh, some pieces in. So some of the less impactful ones. Um, some of the less impactful ones, I can grab like the, I can grab. Kind of this whole thing just doesn't want to move as one. That's unfortunate and annoying. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, in this instance, I already know that as long as I'm inside of this edge, that nothing is going to be a problem. Um, and I know that a D6 has nothing that sticks out beyond anything, and that's all that makes me all happy. I do want to make sure that this does not get too close to this wall. I want to make sure that I have at least at least five millimeters of silicone all the way around that dice. So we're going to actually dimension that in, in spot. Uh, we're going to grab our, uh, our other D6 and we're going to put that in a similar location and we can put these two really quite close together. Again, we'll go like a five millimeter gap and a five millimeter gap. I don't think I'm going to be actually dimensioning most of these. However, I do want to make sure that the dice that need it have, um, the space they need. So actually, what I think I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to grab these, I'm going to convert that, convert these guys in, so that I have, oh, not that, oh, come on, come on, stop being annoying, there we go. You know, it's one of those things, like, when you know how much work goes into making a software like this, it should help you understand, like, hey, this is really impressive, and the little tiny fiddly stuff shouldn't bother you as much as it does. Yet, despite knowing the amount of work that it does to actually make